The Dustin Daniels Show. Unashamedly proclaiming God's purity through His Son, Jesus Christ. Devoted to saving marriages. Dedicated to protecting children. Addressing sex with biblical truth and without shock value. You're listening to the intersection of life and lust. Call toll free at 1 855 5 Dustin. And now, here's your host, Purity Pastor Dustin Daniels. I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what's wrong. I love God's law with all of my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a, what a miserable, wretched man that I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God that the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. It's Romans 7, verses 22 through 25. Today we will be answering questions that have been sent through the website via email. If you have a question, visit DustinDanielsRadio.com. And hey, if you are new to the program, welcome. This radio program is an outreach ministry of Seven Places Ministries. It's a pastoral-led recovery and transformation center. You can visit sevenplaces.org as well. That's S-E-V-E-N, sevenplaces.org. And then when you're on either one of those sites, you're going to see that we've got 80 radio programs that contain Christian authors and pastors and filmmakers, along with ministry leaders, all discussing one thing, and that's God's plan of purity. God's purity of sex, of singleness, of marriage, family, children, and finances. You can listen to all the shows online, whether it's podcast or iTunes. Uh, Feel free to call us at 1-855-5-DUSTIN. That's 1-855-5-DUSTIN. Or email, email us your questions. Something else I want to mention on that website is if you are struggling with sexual sin, sexual integrity, there is a a place to get connected, and it's a free online community. It's private, it's secure, and you can start asking questions like, am I a sex addict? Why can't I stop looking at pornography? I want to, but I can't, and I've got no one to talk to. I'm too ashamed. Maybe that's your first step. So I want to give that resource to you. And by the way, thank you for supporting this radio ministry. Those that have listened for the last uh, 16, 17 months that we've been on the air. This radio program is a miracle and it, it, it truly exists only by the grace of Almighty God. And, you know, and I'm just so thankful. I am. I'm, I'm so thankful that he is using you guys, your families with your prayerful and your financial support to spread this message of purity to 80 countries around the world. So we would love for you to become a financial purity partner with us. And what we are doing is we are fulfilling the Great Commission by spreading this gospel, Jesus' gospel, to all the corners of the earth through this lens of purity. So will will you join us in that effort? Will you pray on that? Once again, the website is DustinDanielsRadio.com. Our first email today comes from Tom in Phoenix. And he writes, Pastor Dustin, I just started listening to your show and I've got a question. I, I heard you say that the issue is not really the issue. Can you explain that further? How is porn not really the issue in my life? Well, Tom, well, thank you for listening and, and writing. 
you know, the, the issue is not really the issue. You know, we have an epidemic in our church and, and one of the things that we try to do is break the silence of that epidemic by discussing sexual purity and pornography and, and things like that on, on the radio program. And we've got a lot of people in the church that are hurting and, and I can relate to that pain. Tom, I was a, a 20, I spent 20 years of my life as an addict. I saw my first pornography magazine when I was very, very young, seven or eight years old. Uh, I was abused as a child as well, sexually abused around the same time. And I was so confused sexually. I, I was, I had no one to talk to. And it was like, what is going on with my, with, with all of this sex stuff that I'm seeing? And then in high school, I started stealing the magazine. So now am I not just dealing with sexual sin? Now I'm a thief because I'm stealing my dad's magazines. And then years and years later, this, this habit, this sin, it turns into affairs. It turns into divorce. It turned into a, a bankruptcy. It turned into domestic violence with my, my second wife who actually hit me on the way out as she was being arrested and then more divorce. You know, this starting off looking at pornography, it it led me to depression and, and suicidal thoughts. I woke up one day, Tom, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to kill myself because I've got no friends in my life. I've got no one to talk to. And all that silence, man, it just, it just led to more shame. So after divorce number two, I started to, reevaluate my life and, and go into church. And I, I started asking and praying for God to forgive me and to fix me. I wanted, Lord, I want you to fix me. And I, I want you to take this twisted desire away from me. You know, I just wanted to, to touch the hem of Jesus's robe. Why do I keep doing the things that I don't want to do? Have you asked that? Have you asked that question? I mean, I, I keep doing the very things that I hate. That's Romans seven. Oh, what a wretched man that I am. And I, I don't know why I do this. And I, I found myself and maybe you're finding yourself in this, this cycle of sin. Maybe confess it to God and then I would sin again and then I would confess it and see, we want to fix our lives, but God Almighty God, he wants us to fix our temple first. And we think our issue is really the issue. Behavioral modification will not work. This is a spiritual problem. This is not just a a physiological problem, a psychological problem. This, first and foremost, is a spiritual problem. This, This sin in your life, this looking at pornography, could be an addiction. This epidemic in the church, it's not really about sex. It's the same issue that Adam and Eve had at the very, very beginning of all mankind in Genesis 3. It's the same issue that Abraham had with Sarah. And King David, a man after God's own heart, it's the same issue that he had with Bathsheba. And then we've got King Solomon, David's son, He had this issue his entire life. And Samson with Delilah. The the real issue is not sex. The real issue is that we just don't trust God. I mean, we say we do, but when we're pressed, we don't. I mean, we, we go to church, we go to Bible studies, we go to these men's groups, we raise our hands during worship. But when God throws us a curveball, man, how how quickly we forget. The question is, do I really believe that God will take care of me? Do I really believe that God will take care of my family? And most of us early on in our life, we don't think so. We, We think we do, but when we're pressed, we find out that we don't. So I've got to take care of my own needs. We have this illusion of control over our lives. I I love Isaiah 6, Isaiah chapter 6. 
And Tom, I'm going to read a little bit of this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two, he covered his face. And with two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. And one called to the other, and they said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, this is Isaiah, Woe is me, for I'm lost. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. See, God is holy. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. God is not just holy. God is holy, holy, holy. And and God will use any circumstance in your life to purge all of this moral evil out of your life. So what really is the answer? If looking at pornography is not really the issue, If sex really isn't the issue, what is the answer? What is the issue? We find that in Matthew 6.33. Seek first the kingdom of Almighty God. Oh, it can't be that simple, Dustin. Come on. I mean, you don't don't understand my, my story. I mean, thanks for sharing your story, but, you know, I've got stuff, too. I mean, you've, you've never really met my father. And I would say, well, that's probably true, but seek first the kingdom of Almighty God. Well, you, you really don't know my wife. Seek first the kingdom of Almighty God. You, you don't understand the pressure of my job. Seek first the kingdom of Almighty God. See, when we seek first the kingdom of God, we see the truth about him And we see the truth about us. And just like Isaiah experienced, man, we see this infinite distance between who God is. He is holy and we are not. And we have this tendency to bring God down to our level. We bring him down out of holiness and we raise ourselves up because we actually think we're a pretty decent person. And when we realize, wow, man, there's so much difference between Almighty God and myself, we say the same thing that Isaiah said. He said, man, woe is me, I'm done. Basically, I'm a dead man. And see, the truth will set you free, but it it hurts like crazy first, doesn't it? To realize that how far away from God that I am, that when God puts me in a circumstance that I'm not really trusting him. Think about how many times Almighty God, Jesus himself, tells us through the Gospels to trust. He talks about the lack of faith. You know, one of the things that I I asked myself a lot when I was going through my, my sin, my addiction for 20 years, God, why, why aren't you answering my prayer? I mean, I was, I was asking, I was pleading with you to, to fix me. And I, I found myself now, instead of just sin, confess, sin, confess, I, I, I finally realized that I was forgiven because of the blood of Jesus Christ that he indeed has cast my sin as far as the east is from the west. And, and that 1 John 1, 9 tells me to confess my sins and that Almighty God, he is faithful and he is just and he will forgive me and he will forgive you. Because God is the only one that's faithful and true. God is faithful to the faithless. So I go through years and years and years of, of confessing my sin only to God. And God, why am I still tempted? 
Why am I not cured? Why am I not healed? It's interesting to me that James 5.16, the half-brother of Jesus, says, confess your sins to one another. It's almost like James knows, look, I know that you've been confessing your sins to God. I get that. But I want you to confess your sins to one another. (laughs) And we're like, whoa, hey, no, 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 no. Look, I know that confession is good for the soul, but man, it is bad for the reputation. I, I, I do not want to look someone eyeball to eyeball and tell them of my secret. Well, why does James say that? Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. Well, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Pray for one another. Lord, I've been praying for years. And evidently, you're just not listening. But see, James goes on, doesn't he? Confess your sins to one another so that you can pray for for one another. Well, why do I want to do that? So that you can be healed. I mean, we really, have to, we really have to ask ourselves, why don't I want to confess my sins to another person? Why is it so much easier to confess my sins to Almighty God? Why don't we want to confess our sins to another brother, another sister? Well, I'd submit to you that because you don't trust God. Maybe it's that you care more about your reputation than God's holiness. Or maybe you're like me. Maybe you're just so scared. But, but here's the thing. How did, how did Jesus deal with sexual sinners? Remember the woman that's caught in adultery in John 8? These religious leaders are literally dragging her to her death. And then they're going to try to set Jesus up, try to frame him. And he deals deals with the pastors. He deals with the religious leaders that are doing all that. But you have to notice how Jesus talks to the woman. Imagine this woman. She is caught in the very act of adultery. Where's the guy? We're not going to focus in on him, but that is a question. She's most likely crying. She is scared to death. She thinks she's, this is her last day. She's getting ready to get murdered. They're going to stone her. And by the way, that is the Old Testament law. And if they would have done that, they would have followed the law correctly. But what does Jesus do? I picture Jesus kneeling down to her as she's crying, as she's weeping, and she, she's got hair in her face and she can't see and and she doesn't want to look Jesus in the eyes. But Jesus looks at her and says, where are they? Where'd they go? And through her tears and her sobs and, and, and her fear, she says, they're gone. And Jesus says, yeah, they're gone. You're safe. Go and sin no more. What about the woman at the well in John 4? How did Jesus deal with her? This Samaritan woman that he wasn't even supposed to talk talk to. This woman had been married five times. And she's, she was living with someone that was not her husband. And if you know anything about numbers from a biblical context, you'll know that the number six is, it means man's best effort. And she has this amazing conversation with Jesus. Not even knowing that through all of these men, all of these marriages, all of these problems, and the man that she's living with now, and she's still searching for this intimacy that she cannot find in another human being and the intimacy is standing right there in front of her. She's been married five times. She's living with someone uh, right now and she's, that's, that's her best effort. And the number seven 
represents perfection. And Jesus is her seventh lover. And what does she do? She runs and she proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ, a woman who has no reputation. She's by herself. She's got no friends. Is there another way? Is there another way to deal with pornography in your life, sexual sin, sexual purity? Seek first the kingdom of Almighty God. I would say no. See, Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth and he is the life. There is no other way. Now, please don't hear what I didn't say. I didn't say go and tell your sin to everybody that you know. That is a really, really bad idea. What I am saying is that repent, repent of your sin, confess your sin to a brother that you can trust, and then get involved in a Christ-centered community that deals with sexual purity. And here in Phoenix, let me invite you to visit the website Seven Places. That's S E V E N Seven Places dot org. We have one on one counseling, group therapy, premarital counseling. And we deal and come alongside the church as a discipleship center that solely focuses on one thing, and that is trusting God with your sexuality. We are a Christ centered, pastoral led recovery ministry. And we come alongside churches because, as you well know, most churches really don't want to talk about the issue. They don't know how. And I'm not placing blame there, but what I am saying is look, if you've got an issue here, come along, let us come alongside you. If you're a pastor listening, if you're a priest listening, if you're a minister listening, we are a nonprofit family ministry that proclaims and pursues God's purity through his son, Jesus Christ. And we are dedicated to strengthening marriages and protecting children by bridging this gap between pornography and the church pew. So if you're struggling with pornography right now, if you realize, just like Tom did, what is my real issue here? If porn is not the issue, then what's the real issue? The real issue is that I don't trust God with my life and I want to learn and I need someone to come alongside me and show me. It is the most amazing journey you will ever go on. And it's amazing to me how many men wait. They'll hear this message and they'll just wait. And they'll go, you know what? I'll just pick up the book. I'll go to the website. I'll, I'll, I'll read a book and I'll fix myself. Well, dear, dear friend, you can't fix yourself. Jesus himself was always in community. Jesus is both truth and grace, grace and truth. And you have to have both in your life. You have to have this community of people to come alongside of you and learn how to do life. So let me encourage you to do that. Visit sevenplaces.org. Get signed up on the website for that online community. I love you. I'll see you next week. God bless. The Dustin Daniels Radio Show is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information with regard to the subject matter covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the host nor the station is engaged in rendering counseling advice for your personal situation. If you need further help, we encourage you to seek the services of a Christ-based counseling professional. For more information on the radio show, visit DustinDanielsRadio.com.